this. So I just went to the uh, Chinese grocery store today, and I don't go there too too often. But when I do, I like to stock up on everything. And you know, if I'm if I know that I'm going to be doing particular recipes, I try to stock up on that. So I thought that I would kind of do like a Chinese grocery store haul for you. Um, not that it's probably as exciting as, you know, a beauty or a fashion haul. But what I thought I'd do is just show you some of the stuff that I bought and um, explain a little bit about the ingredients and then maybe I'll find some pictures online of, you know, some of the, the recipes that it's used um, uh, in and then you can kind of see the final result that way. So, uh, okay, let's start off with produce because you always start off in the grocery aisle. Um, nothing too special. Uh, I got uh, scallions um, from the food aisle. And um, I guess the reason I'm mentioning this is um, every time I see them at the supermarket, scallions at the supermarket, or spring onions, as sometimes it is called, um, it's always super small and it's super expensive. And so uh, if you do have a Chinese grocery store uh, near you, um, you know, this might be a good option. It was like five for two dollars. I also got chives. So, uh, so it's sold like this and there's a ton of them. Um, chives are used a lot in um, dumplings actually. So uh, dumplings, uh, chives mixed with pork is a very uh, typical filling. It's also just in a lot of other, I mean, um, if you go to dim sum or whatnot, you'll, you'll see that uh, chives are in a lot of the dumplings as well. So I got those because it, it looks super fresh, it looks super good. So uh, there. Um, and then next, it's a sort of in the frozen aisle, sort of not. It was more refrigerated, but you can freeze it. And um, these are, what do you call them? Chinese crawlers, uh, twist crawlers. They're they're basically fried dough, um, and it's, it's like yo tiao or yao tu. Um, and what we use them for is um, uh, there's this um, kind of is it like rule like like porridge rice with water, and we cook it down and we kind of turn it into this porridge soup. And um, these are really popular to dress it up because it is just rice and water and rice and water soup, a lot of the times we'll add a lot of um, kind of other side ingredients to it to dress it up and it, it turns out to be wicked good. And those of you that uh, like to go to dim sum, this is also um, one of the, the dishes. They'll wrap uh, the, the fried dough up in kind of rice paper and they'll put soy sauce on it and it's super, super, super good. Um, so there's that. I guess I'll go on to uh, these. The, these are preserved thousand year old duck eggs and um, what it is is they, they preserve duck eggs in sodium carbonate, salt, and some other kind of flavorings and it turns the egg, I don't know if you can see it, it turns the egg and the egg yolk black. And it's actually pretty uh, neat to look at because um, uh, the, the egg whites kind of become translucent, but it, but it is black, and um, it the egg picks up kind of this rich, um, sort of basic flavor as well. Uh, those of you that know about like kanse or uh, just like alkaline noodles, it, it, it has a lot of that taste. Or um, uh, some of you that are not familiar, I would say, you know like when you when you like lick the the cup, uh, kind of the surface of a pretzel and how you kind of get that like sort of basic um, flavor. It's a little bit like this. And um, this stuff is uh, used also in porridge. It's um it, it's very popular in that. So you'll so you'll add some of that fried dough and then you'll add some of this and you know some scallions and whatnot and suddenly you have this amazing kind of porridge uh, meal. And then, um, you know, and then you, you can also put it in other things. Um, in Taiwan, one of my favorite dishes is um, they'll have like a big block of um, tofu, and then I'll top it off with um, kind of like the sweet, it's kind of like the, the sauce that they put on like eel. Um, sweet sauce, and then they'll put some bonito like fish flakes, um, some scallions, and then they'll put uh, this uh, preserved duck egg on it. And because duck eggs are already, it already tastes a little bit more rich than, than normal eggs, but you have that, and then you have kind of the sodium carbonate flavor, and um, it, yeah, it's 
It's actually uh, really good. Um, and that was in the refrigerated section as well, although I've seen it in just the dried goods section because it's already preserved. Um, next, uh, next I have, so it's another type of egg and it was right next to it. And um, this is something that my aunt and my mom are, they really like. And it's also duck eggs. Uh, it's preserved in salt though, so it's salted duck eggs. And these are really popular, actually, if you just mix them in rice, it's, um, I find this a lot where, um, you know, because our, kind of our foundation is rice, uh, we have a lot of these, like, stronger flavored um, dishes to, to go on top of the rice, and, and uh, salted duck eggs is one of them, so you'll, you know, you'll have your meats and, and, and your um, uh, vegetables, and then you can uh, have these salted eggs, and then you know cut them in half or cut them into small pieces, and then add them to your rice. And it's actually it's really good, and you can make it yourself too. But um, it's nothing. I mean, for this, uh, it's nothing too too special. It, sh it tastes like eggs that have been salted, and it's, it's hard boiled already. So uh, uh, a neat little thing for that. Um, next, um, I got pork floss. Uh, <laughs> what is pork floss? Um, so, I don't exactly know how they make it, but I believe that my friend when I was younger told me that her mom used to, so I think what they do is they, they have pork and then they kind of pull it into these really thin strands and then they add, you know, flavoring to it like, like sugar and, and soy sauce, um, and, and it all gets dried. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but it gets dried into these like little pork flossy bits and um, you can put them in rice, which is really good. Um, there's, there's this rice ball thing that they do in Taiwan, also in other places, but it's like a ball of glutinous uh, rice and then they'll put some of this in there and some of the, um, maybe like the fried dough stuff. So it's just really good as a condiment. I think it's more of a condiment than anything else. And, and you know, you can put it on rice and it's, 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 uh, it's, it's stringy, but it's, it's like a good sweet and salty and somewhat crunchy, uh, meat condiment. Yes. Sounds weird, but it's actually really good. Um, I was looking for black beans, like sometimes you'll see like garlic black bean sauce for uh, pork or, or something, and um, and then I found these, and it was like a bag of black beans, um, and it's uh, marinated in ginger, salt, orange peel, spices, soy sauce, all that jazz, um, for, for $1.99 instead of having it in a jar, and I thought, this would be really useful for when I do cook pork, or uh, a lot of the times the Cantonese they'll they'll put this in fish as well. It's a it's it's just salty or salted uh, beans, and the beans are uh, have been pre-cut, so it's a little bit softer, and it adds a nice uh, it adds a nice flavor to it if you're if you're into that kind of stuff. So it's like a little bit fermenty, a little bit um, soy saucy. So there's that. Um, and if I want to make you know pork uh, or that kind of black bean garlic sauce, I can kind of do it in my own home instead of buying it from, um, in a jar, which is a little bit actually more expensive. Um, next thing, there's like two more, but not really. Uh, dried shrimp. Sometimes you can find these at normal grocery stores, sometimes you can't, but um, these are really good for flavoring. Because it is dried, It um, all of the flavors concentrate and you have that nice like shrimpy, oceany flavor. Um, we'll put it in, um, if you guys have ever had zhongzis, they're, they're, uh, it's like glutinous rice wrapped in lotus leaf and um, there'll be meats and, and you know, like mushrooms and whatever you really want in there, but uh, adding this kind of rehydrates it. and adds a little bit of crunch, a little bit of texture, and then also good flavor. Um, you can also put it in things like uh, dumplings, um, the joe, the, the, um, the, the, the porridge that I was talking about. Um, so kind of a flavoring ingredient enhancer. Um, you know, uh, some people use salt and this is kind of a little bit salty and a little bit um, trippy as well. Um, okay, uh, next thing going with the saltiness, uh, I'm going to be doing a recipe with this soon, and I don't 
want to ruin the surprise, but this is a um, salted, what is it called, dried croaker? It's salted fish, and um, uh, the Chinese just use it. it. It could be, again, a condiment to, to rice, kind of like the salted duck eggs. Uh, you kind of steam it with the rice, this salt. Okay guys, so I don't know where I left off at, but I ran out of space on my camera, so clearly it's uh, a little too long. But um, we're just going to finish off with the salty fish. So um, sometimes we'll also chop it up and um, put it into, you know, meats and, and, and rice and different dishes. Um, it's sort of like using it as salt, but then um, instead you also get, you know, a bit of salty flavor and then a little bit of um, fish uh, flavor as well. So it's, it's kind of nice. Um, Last two things, not food. First one, I got this plate. Um, I'm always looking for plates at like open air markets and like Salvation Army stores and also you know normal normal stores as well. And they're always you know they're always pretty pricey. And actually, this is um, this is not bad, but it wasn't uh, cheap either, but I'm, I'm always looking for plates that, um, will photograph well, but then that I can also, um, use for a lot of dishes. So this is not one of them because there's, like, fish and Chinese writing on it. So, um, it will probably be reserved to just, um, those types of dishes. And then the last thing is, um, I have done a lot of recipes, uh, lately with steamers, uh, with, with steaming. Um, and that's because I think... I mean, it seems like it is the preferred method to cook things. So my mom will cook everything from like meats to to vegetables to you know cakes um, with with a steamer. And um, we don't have um, uh, we don't have a steamer steamer. So uh, what Chinese people will do is um, you know you kind of get a, a deep enough pot. Fill it up with water. You get one of these guys, stick it on, and then they'll just plop the uh, the bowl right on, and then you you know turn it on and and, and steam away. And um, I I really like this method of cooking because it's it's very gentle, and at the same time the steam um, keeps everything nice and moist. So uh, I really like that kind of stuff. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know. Uh, if you want me to do more of these or if it's just weird, I thought it would be a good kind of platform to introduce new ingredients. Um, so yeah, so thank you so much for watching and um, I will see you guys again um, next time.